Good evening, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Will you stand with me, please? Let's honor the Lord with a hand clap praise offering. If you would join with me in prayer, Holy Father, once again, we come. We say thank you, Lord, for your goodness and your kindness and your mercy, God. Thank you for sending your word to heal us, God. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, your only begotten Son, whom gave his life for us and shed his blood. But God, we thank you because you empowered him to rise up from the dead upon the third day, God. And therefore, we do declare that we have not only died with him, but we have risen with him because of you. Thank you, Lord, for empowering us to become your sons and your daughters. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for coming into our flesh, being our Savior, leading us by your Holy Spirit, and we thank you. Tonight, God, we honor you. Thank you for your presence, Lord. We pray for those that are watching, God, that you have sent your word. Your word has declared that it has healed them in the name of Jesus. And Father, we pray that your word will bless us tonight, inspire us, and empower us. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Come on, tell the Lord, thank you. All right, or y'all could do better than that. Come on, let's tell the Lord Jesus, thank you. I like to always remind people as you be seated, thank you, is that we have to always remember that um, the Holy Spirit is always uh, with us because he have come into our flesh and he dwells in us, he lives in us. So we have them everywhere we go. So everywhere we go, we are empowered uh, for kingdom work. We're empowered. Never give that thought over to the devil by saying the devil have victory over you or any of that. Because not only have you been empowered, but we have been uh, filled with the power and the spirit of God. Amen? Amen. So we have the victory. And Jesus said, and these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall not only just lay hands on the sick and the sick shall be healed, but they should also cast out demons and speak in tongues and so forth and so forth. So always know that you have been empowered to do the marvelous work in the kingdom. God never puts us into the kingdom to do kingdom work without empowering us with the uh, tools that we need, such as our wisdom, uh, understanding all come from him. He never put us out there without giving it to us. You remember what he did with the disciples? He empowered them, then he sent them out. And whatever you, uh, you, you cannot conquer, uh, he has a word for that as he told them, is that this kind only come with fasting and praying. But tonight we wanna talk about uh, a, a key issue that should be very dear to every believer, to every believer. Uh, and that is our salvation. I don't think that we take our salvation uh, serious enough uh, in the kingdom of God. Um, I'm just going wide abroad what I, I, I look and I uh, can only think um, how many really take their salvation for serious? What, what is our salvation? It's, it's the price that Jesus paid for us to save us, to deliver us uh, of our sins. He paid the price for our sins, for the sins of this world. Um, but there are some key points behind it. I don't like to always say, one save, always save, as long as you want to be saved. I believe in eternal salvation, uh, eternity. Uh, but however, I also believe in the other part of the scripture too, that one can backslide and go back to the world and no longer want to be saved. Uh, but what we want to talk about is Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12, where the Apostle Paul speaks about this. And we want to just kind of throw around this question, what uh, does it mean to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling? And I think this is something we really need to understand. I, I don't have all the answers. I'll be the first one to tell you I'm not the smartest person in the world. I don't have every answer. There are probably many people that worship here that probably um, have many answers that I have, but the answers that I do have, I take my time to search them out and research them to make sure I understand. Um, 
what the word of God is saying. In Philippians chapter two and verse uh, 12, Paul writes this, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, notice what he said, have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here Paul talks to him about it that not only have you uh, been uh, obedient, not to him, but to the word of God, always, he says, not as in my presence only. In other words, in my presence, you obeyed the word of God, and in my absence, you obeyed the word of God. So he said, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Here it becomes personal. This is where it becomes personal. It needs to become personal with each of us <clears throat> when you think about your salvation. Now, I feel good as a pastor teaching this because uh, God has called me to be a soul watcher. So I, I believe that this is very prevalent to speak this to you and not just to you, but for myself also. Even as pastors and overseers and lay people, we have to watch out, uh, work out our salvation as well. Oftentimes we become so engulfed uh, with uh, the souls of the people until we forget about ourselves. So I've learned one thing is that I put myself first. I watch out for the souls that Christ has appointed me to watch over, but also have to watch out for myself first and have to put myself first because I don't want to be lost because if I'm lost and you following me, then we all are lost. The Bible say that how can a blind lead the blind? <clears throat> so, so this question ponders what does it mean to work out your own soul salvation? Your own soul salvation. Your own, well, let, let me back up. Let me not put, take soul out because the scriptures say work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. It's connected to the soul, uh, but let's talk about that. What does it mean to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? What comes to your mind when you think about that? Because oftentimes, I'll tell you this, we think about as little about our salvation then we think about, and I'm going from the spiritual to the natural, um, our life here on earth while we are alive. While we are alive, we're excited, we're enjoying life. That's what we, God wants us to do. We enjoy life, we have fun, and we do everything under the sun. But it's one thing that most of us don't deal with because we don't talk about is have you made the right preparation when you leave this earth? A lot of people are dying that has no life insurance, no burial plan, no will, no nothing. And it leaves their family torn apart. And you wonder why they live all their life doing what they want to do, as happy as they want to be, not a worry in the world. Uh, and when they die, the family is stressed out, trying to figure out how I'm going to bury this person. So just like they don't think about it, you know, I, I shared this with you all before. I shared it with my family. And I told my family, you know, hey, look, this is it. There is no more money for me to bury anyone. So I often tell people this, if you're going to be, if you're going to drink, if you're going to do drugs or whatever you're going to do, do it responsible. At least if you're, going to, if you're going to do drugs, have your insurance policy. You know, uh, be responsible. You know, just like they say, if, if you drink, have a designated driver. So now, we, 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 now let's move from that and deal with this next issue. The same issue, but on a spiritual level, our salvation. Do we think about how serious our salvation is? It's very serious because notice what Paul said again in Philippians chapter 2 and verse 12. He said, work out your own 
salvation. Now, right there, that's kind of almost like saying as a pastor that I'm not stressed out about the people's souls. Uh, I'm a watchman of the souls. The scripture says in Hebrew, obey them. I think it's around Hebrew chapter 13, I believe. He say, obey them. I want to say 13 and 17. Say, obey them that have the rule over you for they watch out for your soul. So I'm just a soul watcher as your pastor. I'm just a soul watcher. But you have a responsibility to do. Now, Jesus gave his life for us that we, we, we were saved. The pastor has been given the task to watch out for the souls. But now your responsibility is, is to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. So that means that everybody has a part. Jesus has done his part. Me as a pastor, I'm doing my part. Pastors are doing their part. Now you have to do your part. You have to be responsible. What, what part you need to be responsible? I try not to let a day go by before I lay down at night to say, God, forgive me of all of my sins, those that I was aware of and then those that I wasn't aware of. So I, I'm being responsible right there. It's kind of like making sure I pay my insurance policy, in other words, making sure it don't lapse, you know, because uh, uh, if you close your eyes and don't open them again, and you knew you was caught up in a sin or your sins, then I mean, you have to be responsible. You know, you have to be responsible. So the answer is in Philippians. The, the question is, what does it mean to work out your own salvation with fear and trembling? So the answer is in the same chapter and verse. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13 says, for it is God which what? Work it where? In you, what? Both to what? Will and to do. So it is the God that is in us. How is God in us? His spirit. See, his spirit. Because God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. It's his spirit that is in us. For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Of his good pleasure. You want to remember now, we've been bought with a price. We are owned by the Lord. Most people who choose not to worship or serve Christ, they choose to be in the world. And the Bible says that if you're in the world, then you're an enemy of God. You know? So here it becomes our responsibility to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling for it is God which worketh in us so we have the power that worketh in us in you both to will two things to will and to do so we not not only are just hearers of the word but we have to be doers of the word you know in other and you know Paul writes therefore my dear friends uh, as you have always obeyed not only in my presence but now much more in my absence. Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act according to his purpose. Now, this text is often misused to instill fear into people, warning them that it means that they can lose salvation. So what does it mean to work out our salvation with fear and trembling? Paul can hardly be encouraging uh, believers to live in a continuous condition of nervousness and anxiety that will contradict his many other exhortations to peace of mind, courage, and confidence in the God who authors our salvation. So Paul is not using a, a scare tactic here, and, and we shouldn't use it either. So the Greek word translated fear in this context can equally mean reverence or respect. So when we talk about fearing God, we're not speaking fearing God of frightening and scared, but we're talking about reverence and respect. Reverence is the highest respect that you can have, you know. So when we, when we understand what Paul is saying, he's not using a fear tactic. He's just simply telling the people, look, work out your own 
So on your own salvation with fear and trembling, how do you do that? Remember now the God that's in you both to will and to do. So Paul is saying what you do is, is that you, you, you reverence. Fear means you reverence or respect God. You know, Paul uses the same phrase in 2 Corinthians 7 and, and 15. He says, and his inward affection is more abundant towards you. Will so he remember the obedience of you all, how with fear and trembling ye receive him. In other words, with fear and trembling, how you receive them with respect. What does it mean? Have you all ever been in the presence of a, of a uh, I, I like to say powerful person or a well-known person, you know, is, is that that river, reverence come up over you, that fear and, 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 and trembling come up over you? Not that you're afraid of them, but when you see them. I remember when I was a kid and uh, my, my, my sister and brother-in-law took me to wrestling to see Andre the Giant, because I just love wrestling. You know, Wahoo McDaniel was one of my favorite, you know. Then, and so I was right there and then here come Andre the Giant and walked right by me and I was so nervous and shaking and I remember just looking up saying, Andre. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, was, I was a child, you know. So, you know, or when you get in the presence of like, you know, someone that, that's well known or something, it's like fear come over you, not that you're afraid of that person, but just the reverence of them. Well, think about God, you know. I mean, it, when we get in the presence of God, when, when is that? Always. When you go to sleep and wake up, you're in the presence of God. And I think that most people have become so slack and comfort, comfort uh, that they think that, that God really don't exist or God just one of the homeboys or homegirls, you know, uh, not homegirls, f- forgive me, Lord, but God just one of my homies, one of my cool people, you know what I'm saying? He just, no, 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 no. It's not like that with God. See, it's like you trying to walk up to President Obama and say, man, what's up, dog? That's what I'm saying. You was a good president. No, it, it don't go like that. It's called respect and reverence. You know, and that's in everything we do. With God, that's, that, that's kind of mindset we should have. You know, not just approaching God any kind of way. Not waiting till you get to God's house. But this needs to go on even in your home. God is present. Remember, the scripture says he's in us. The only ones that don't reverence or fear God is those who God is not in. See, they're not in. And, and, and what I love about the word of God, when I see all of this stuff going on, everybody just, oh, you know, the hate groups and all this. Man, I love to see all of this stuff going on. I mean, I get a, a shot of adrenaline when I see earthquakes and stuff like that going on. Yes, Lord, I, my heart goes out to the people who die in them, but I, I don't get a rush of adrenaline because of that, but I get a rush when I see an earthquake, uh, you know, in, in place. Why do I get a rush? Because that lets me know that everything that God said in his word is coming to pass. So when people start falling off from the church, he said that in his word, in the last days, they're going to be a great falling off. That's why I want you to understand how important your salvation is. Most people think I'll get saved today and I'll just go back into the world, do what I want to do. And then if I, once I get real old or I become real sick, then I'll say, okay, God, you know, the Bible does say that you could call upon him on your deathbed and you could be saved. But let me, let me, let me share something with you. Don't play Russian roulette with your salvation because if you know better and you walk away from God, you got to go back to Hebrews now when he says that to those who have tasted the goodness and the spirit and all of these things and then you, you, you turn and go back, he says it's impossible to restore such a one. So you, you, you know, don't, don't give up because he said you continue to work out your, your salvation with fear and trembling. So again, Paul uses that, that phrase in 2 uh, Corinthians 7.15 where he refers to Titus as being encouraged by the Corinthians' reception of him with fear and trembling, that is with great humility and respect for his position as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And this is what the Bible tells us to do. You know, even though I'm a pastor, I'm a bishop, I have this same reverence of, of respect for other pastors and and. and and bishops, and watch this here, not only that, but for even God's people. 
I have that same reverence of respect for each of you. I don't take it for granted. Why? Because it is the God that is in us. See, I, I, don't, I don't look at, oh, I'll respect the apostle and the bishops, and the, but everybody else that beneath me. No, no one is beneath me. We are all created equal. My assignment may be greater than your assignment, but you know we all have a work to do. So this was what Paul was doing. And this is what he's telling us is that with fear and trembling, with reverence, with respect to God, you know, great humility and respect. He was saying for Titus' position as a minister. So you see, I respect each of you with great respect. You know, because of your title, what is your title? You might say, well, Bishop, I'm not a preacher, I'm not a deacon, I'm not, but let me tell you what you are that is far more greater. You're a child of God. And the Bible says he has given us power to become the sons and daughters of God. So it's just like, you, you, I'm going to use President Trump. Okay, how many people hate him? If little Baron Trump walk up in here and, and everybody know it's Baron Trump, he don't have to be with his daddy or his mama. He's going to have some secret services with him. And watch this here. They go, everybody going to show him so much of reverence and respect. Baron, all oh, Baron. It's because whose son he is. You know, if President Obama's daughter walk in here, they can walk in here with others. It's going to be because of who he is. She could be, his daughters can be good friends with Taylor and Joyce. And they can like, ooh, y'all acting all like that. They're going to act a certain way with them too. They're going to be friends with them, but they're going to have that respect for them because who daughters they are. Well, I'm the same way with God's children. When I get to hang out with you all, I'm honored because I'm like, I'm hanging out with my brothers and sisters. These are God's children. So this is what Paul was saying in 2 Corinthians 7 and 15. He was telling them, you know, that um, encouraging them uh, to receive Titus with fear and trembling. It used to be like that. You wouldn't see people like they do now disrespecting pastors and preachers, you know. Uh, they, if they would smoke or drink, they come by, they'll put it behind their back. You know, uh, whatever they were doing, they'll stop and come attention. It was just a reverence and a respect. Nowadays, they don't care. They be sitting up there smoking. Uh, uh, you know, Rev, hey, Rev, you want to hit? You know, all kinds, they, they have no respect, you know. Uh, they, 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 you know, they, it, it's, it's about reverencing God. You know, if you knew if you knew, if either of us knew, but I'm, I'm, I know what I, I would do. If you knew that you were going to meet, uh, give me some names real quick of someone you would love to meet. Some well-known person, some Oprah, who else? John Cena, who else? Michelle Obama. Now watch this here. Who? Tyler Perry. Mars Chestnut. Now watch this here. Who is it? Idris Elba. No, I don't even know who that is. Who is he? The Rock. Can you smell what The Rock is? Okay, now watch this. Check this out. Now you do all of that. Now, if you meet, if you had, if you knew you was going to meet, these people, I guarantee you, you're going to comb your hair. First thing you're going to do, you're going you're gonna to take you probably an hour long bath. I got to meet Oprah, I got to meet The Rock, I got to meet Morris Chestnut. And you, 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 you're going you gonna to fix your hair up nice, a am I right? You're going to put on your nice clothes because you know I'm getting ready to meet somebody. And I'm not going to go any kind of way. You know, you're going to probably brush your teeth 10 times, pour some gas in there, set your mouth on fire, burn out everything. You know, you're going to make sure it's right. Take some Clorox and get them right. You're going to do your best. Get your best perfume if you don't have it. Hey, Brother Johnson, whoa, that cologne you were wearing Sunday? Man, let me have a shot of that. I'm getting ready to meet son. You know, so you're going to do your best. And when you walk in and see Oprah, you go, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, ah! You know, screaming, you know how they do. I used to, 
I used to laugh, boy, when they showed them videos, Michael Jackson on the stage, and they're not even sitting there, like, Michael, Michael, he can't even hear him, number one, and they fight, faint, oh, you know, like the Five Heartbeats, that movie, remember that movie, they was up there, and he just holler, ah, and they, oh, they just faint, you know. So, you know, it's just like many of us, you meet that person, you're going to be your best, you're going to dress your best, look your best, and be on your best behavior. Well, can I ask a question? None of those people we just call out is greater than God. That's the mindset we should have every day when we meet God because he in us. We should dress appropriate, act appropriate, do things appropriate. I'm not talking about, you know, sedidified like, oh, you know, you know, no, no. I'm saying with the mindset, because why? With fear and trembling, I have the most utmost respect and reverence for God that I just can't dress. You know, my, my wife tell me all the time, you know, when, when I mean, you know, when I'm at the house and I might want to go to the store, I don't feel like putting getting dressed. If I got on my slides and my shorts and my old t-shirt, that's she say, baby, dress right now. What she say it makes sense. She said, you need to dress right. Uh, because you the bishop. Don't leave out the house and I say, what the bishop supposed to look like? I'm comfortable. You know, and I go out the door, but but my mindset, I be saying, Lord, I hope I don't run across no one. What if I run across another preacher or pastor that I know? Or what about if some saint say, I know who you are? And I was like, you know, so I'm trying to learn now that we have to represent God in a way, always, because you never know whom you may meet, you know, or what God may have you to do. Many things that God does in, in, in uh, you know, I, I don't even remember, you know, I'm not gonna call no name, but I got a call, not a call, but I got a text from, from a young man that I prayed for. And um, I, 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 you know, I didn't know. He said, look, thank you for praying for me. You know, went to the doctor, and my, my hepatitis uh, uh, C was, it's, it's gone. It's zero, you know. And I say, praise God, all glory go to God. So we have to represent God everywhere we go. See, because if, if we, you know, we, we, just have to, we just have to look. I mean, look, look at Barry. He was playing with the same thing I would you, the little spinner. Everybody on the news went crazy. Oh, Barron playing with a spinner. It had probably sold a million more. But do you really know who you are? See, Trump may be the president of the United States of America, but God, your father, our father, my father, your father, is the creator of heaven and earth. And we should reverence him. You know, we should reverence him. And, 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 and so Paul here, as we go further, because we're talking about what does it mean? You need to understand what it really means about working out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. Again, it's not that you have to be frightened. You know, a lot of people used that when they was teaching and had people so mixed up in the head and, and so afraid, you know. No, it's about respecting God, knowing who God, what, who God is, you know. So after he was being encouraged with all of that to respect his position as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Paul himself came to the Corinthian church in weakness and fear, just like all of us, and with much trembling. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 3, Paul said, And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling, mindful of the great and awesome nature of the work in which he was engaged. And that's all of us. We're mindful of that. You know, that's why, you know, I love it when I hear ministers say, man, when I got ready. But see, sometimes I think they be confused. They say, I'm nervous. Or people get ready to sing and they say, I'm nervous. You know, because that would, see, they're nervous because they are fearful of the people. See, but if you get rid of all of that and the Christ that's in you is where your reverence ought to be. And it's not nervous and scared, oh, if I don't get this right, Jesus is going to knock me out. No, it's all about, you know what, there's a certain demeanor I have to have. 
There's a certain way I have to talk. There's a certain way I have to do things. I can't dress like everybody else. Why? I represent someone different. I represent God, you know. So I'm working out my own soul salvation with fear and trembling, you know. So I, I realize I have to look nice. I have to be respectful, you know. I'm still trying to get it together, though, because I still love my slides and my shorts when I go out to the store. I still like that, you know. Maybe I just had to get me some nicer slides or something. I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm trying. Y'all praying for me? I'm trying. I, I, now I'm going to use that part. I haven't laid hold to perfection yet, but I'm trying. So the sense in which we ought to work out our salvation in fear and trembling is twofold. First, the Greek verb rendered work out means to continually work to bring something to completion or fruition or fruition. So it's a continuous work. It's not something that we can do. It's continuously. Paul say, look, I have not yet laid hold to perfection, but I'm striving, I'm trying. So we, we should be trying to be better every time, you know. We should be trying to do our best. Even on our jobs, you know, uh, we, it's a certain thing we have to be we, uh, respectful, you know. Uh, and, 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 you know, I look and I understand, I probably lose a lot of friends from this that are watching. I don't care what, what they say, they can talk about President Trump all they want to. The fact of the matter is, this is our President of the United States of America. And, and, and the, if, if you're if you going to believe the Bible, you have to believe it all the way. The Bible says that it is God who put the governments in place. So there has to be a purpose why God allowed him to become the president. And the way I look at it was, is when George Bush was in office, people talked about Bush. When, when uh, Barack Obama was in office, they talked about him. Trump in office talked about him. Clinton, they talked about him. You know, not too many people can remember anything about Clinton other than Monica Lewinsky or this favorite phrase. I never smoked marijuana before, but I surely have a lot of it, you know. <laughs> but he was still our president. So the thing about it is, it's re respect. Respect. And when you see all of this stuff that's going around you, man, people is dying. God grew up with 53 years old, was going to turn 54 uh, next month. Come to find out he died. They just buried him Saturday. And I was like, wow, you know, it life is, is and, and that's why I'd be telling the young people, they got to get this. If you would have made plans about what you're going to be in life and what you're going to do, and I can't wait till I get grown and, and all of this here. Let me, let, me, let me help you out. You need to be working on your salvation. That's what you need to be working on because nothing else is guaranteed. It ain't guaranteed you're going to live to get old. You know, it ain't guaranteed. And I, and I found out this guy, he had a heart attack. He had been sick, but he didn't die from what his sickness was. So it's, it's not guaranteed. He just happened to go to the restroom. That's where his wife found him at. So the thing about it, it's not, it's not guaranteed to any of us. It ain't guaranteed when you drive out down the street that, that you're going to make it. So this is why we have to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, knowing that it is the God that is in us. When we approach even in God's house, we should have a certain demeanor about ourselves, that respect, you know. Now, now when, 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 when uh, State Representative uh, Safranya Thompson and Judge, what is it? Coffee uh, came a few Sundays ago. You know, everyone, you know, that really understood was kind of excited and, 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 and respect them to the highest respect. You know, some people who didn't know who they were, I knew who she was, but I didn't know who he was. You know, but people who didn't know who they were, they really didn't pay them no attention. They were just average people. But once you found out who they were, 
it was a level of respect. See, you'll get that level of respect if people know who you are. They need to know that you are a son or a daughter of God. See, and that's what it's all about. So the sense in which we ought to work out our salvation, again, it, uh, in fear and trembling. So remember, the first Greek verb, render workout, means to continually work to bring something to completion or fruition. So we do this by actively pursuing obedience in the process of sanctification, which Paul explains further in the next chapter of Philippians, and he described himself as straining and, uh, and, and pressing on towards the goal of the Christ likeness. If you look in Philippians 3 and 13 and 14, he says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press towards the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. So again, uh, we do this by actively pursuing obedience in the process of sanctification. See, we have to always pursue obedience. Obedience, obedience in everything, obedience to God. We are so mindful of man and we forget about God. You see, and man can only destroy your body, but God can destroy both body and soul. You know, so that's what we have to be uh, conscious of. So the trembling he experiences is the attitude Christians ought to have in pursuing this goal. A healthy fear of, of, of offending God through disobedience and in awe and respect for his majesty and holiness. So you understand fear now and trembling. So again, fear is what we do. Well, trembling is the part we do that we continue to pursue. See? And fear is, I don't want to let you down, God. It has to be healthy in respect. I don't want to offend God by disobeying him. I don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit that is in me. I don't want to be disobedient. That's why I'm always saying, Lord, forgive me. See? And, you know, I've, and, and you have to be willing to forgive people. Y'all just don't know how many people, people have came to me that have, have lied on me, that did whatever they did. And I found out something, is that when I be telling y'all don't have to protect it, soon they come back and they say, you know, Bishop, man, I just want to apologize. Bishop, I want to apologize. I'm so sorry. You know, why? I'd have been and forgot about it. Why? You know, I, I know I, I lied on you, but here's their testimony. Since I did this to you, my life have just took a sparrow down. And it's not because I'm no, one, I'm no more special than you are. It's because when you live in obedience to God and you start living your life according to the scriptures, then God is obligated according to his word to take care of you. God wants you to stay focused. Paul said that I press towards the mark. Let's go back to Jesus. Jesus, the Bible said, he looked at the joy that was set before him. He didn't look behind him. He didn't look at who lied on him, who, who persecuted him, who called him this, who called him that. They call him a Bezebub. They call him all that. They call him a devil. They call him... But the Bible say he was focused. Now look at Paul. Paul said, I do not look at the things that are behind me, but I press forward. The only way you can press forward, you have to be looking forward. So what are you looking forward to? Your salvation. The day that Jesus will return. Sometimes I just look up at heaven and be just, uh, uh, just, just flawed by it and say, God, your soul just... God, you're just so awesome. When I just look at the beauty of things, when I look out, I had a, a, a privilege to step out on the balcony and, and, and not just see the ocean, but hear it. And I was like, and I wasn't, I wasn't right on it, I was the distance. And I was like, God, it's just beautiful, beautiful. Sometimes it's good to get up at five, six o'clock in the morning, watch the sun rise. You know, just a beautiful sight. 
Sometimes I'm laying in bed, and depending on what time it is, I can see the moon from my window and shining so bright, and I say, God, you're just so beautiful. Sometimes I just look and say, God, I know you up there. I know you up there, you know. So it's about working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, respecting God, you know, respecting God. So let me, I'm almost done here. I'm almost done. So again, in this process of sanctification, we have to show obedience to God, okay? Uh, the trembling he experiences is the attitude Christians are to have in pursuing this goal. A healthy fear of offending God through his obedience and an awe and respect for his majesty and holiness. Trembling can also refer to shaking due to weakness. But this is a weakness of higher purpose, one which brings us to a state of dependency on God. Obedience and submission to the God we are revered, uh, reverend and respect is our reasonable service. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, Paul writes, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies. Remember I talked about that earlier. You present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed, how? By the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So the only way we can, we can prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, we have to renew our mindset. See? Can't have that same mindset. You know, your, your dressing uh, ought to be different. You know, when you first come in, you know, and you first come in, just move over, I'll take care of that lady. When you first come in, and you, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you just sit down right there. You ain't got to run all the way. I ain't running your way. I'm just, I'm teaching right now. Yeah. You, you know, when you first get saved and come into the knowledge of Christ, watch this here. You may, you know, figure, well, I'm, I'm going to, you know, wear this muscle shirt and these little pants or, you know, I'm going to wear, this, you know, in other words, you look like the world. You know, you look like the world, you know. Uh, but after a year, Everything, there ought to be some things changing about you. Your dressing ought to be different. Your talking ought to be different. You know, instead of saying, oh, it's whatever you say about God, it ought to be, yeah, God is. You know, there ought to be some difference, differences in you, you know. It ought to be. And, and there's just certain things. That's why I want the young people to know, listen, your parents and the adults are not picking on you. Everything and everyone have rules and regulations. And I can guarantee you some of the stuff that they want to wear in the house of God, they can't wear it in school. So it's about reverence and respect. My grandma used to always say this, and this deals with us as being saints. If you don't respect yourself, ain't nobody else will. See? So watch this. If you don't respect, I hear, you know, if you don't respect the God that is in you, ain't nobody else going to do that. They're going to treat you like whatever, whoever. It's when you bring out the light to let the Christ in you come out. So let, 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 let me say this, okay? So we already talked about trembling can also refer to shakiness due to weakness, okay? We talked about Romans 12, 1 and 2. And, and watch what he says, and bring great joy. Psalms 2 and 11 says, serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Serve the Lord with fear. Again, not I'm frightened. No, of respect, of respect. Give it your all. I, I stay on our, our young people. I love messing with them. Um, you know, because I tell them all the time, I say, I didn't know you could move like that. Because when you're in the choir, it's like, you're like a robot, you know. I say, you know, bring some of that loose movement when you're worshiping God, you know. And, and that's what my job as a pastor is to stir them in that direction, you know. Just like today, I ain't going to call no name. I saw someone, you know, a young person, they were getting down, you know. They were doing something like a, road, a rope or something, you know. And I mean, they were just cutting up. You know, they were cutting up. I ain't going to call their name out, you know, because I protect my young people. But what I'm saying is that's good. 
You know, when we worship God, let's worship God in fear and trembling, knowing, because watch this here. If, if, if we always try to do our best when a well-known person is before us, we always try to do our best. We're gonna try to sing our best. We're, we're gonna be on our best behavior in everything, you know. So let me sum it up perfectly here. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. We work out our salvation by going to the very source of our salvation. That's Jesus Christ. See? The word of God wherein we renew our hearts and mind. Again, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Coming into his presence with a spirit of reverence and awe. And that's when you start seeing the miraculous of power of God. Sometimes try when you're sitting there. In, in, you know why we, we, we are in the midst of praise or worship or just sitting there just acknowledge just say you know just say you know God thank you for being present here see I, I don't want to just gather with you all I love you all but I don't want to just gather to just gather with you all on a Sunday morning or Wednesday night it would be boring it would be boring you know but to gather in the presence of God with you all, that's more important. Because Jesus said, where well, there's two or three. And the ultimate uh, 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 goal is, or the purpose is, is to have him present in the midst of what we're doing. Because if he is present in the midst of what we're doing, people will be healed, people will be delivered, people will be set free. And you know what? Your, your, your dreams will come into reality, all of that. Things get done. That's why we need them in our presence. Answers to your questions. Your stress level will go down. All of that. That's why it's very important that when we get together on one accord, Jesus say two or three, I'll be in the midst. Don't need everybody. Everybody else could be acting foolish, but if just two or three of us get on one accord, he's in the midst of us. It'll make the foolish act right, you know, or you miss them. And what I mean about miss them, you'll miss out on what he would do in the midst. So the spirit of God is in us. See, he's working in us. So when we come into the Lord's presence with a spirit of reverence and awe, it ought to be, I'm in the presence. Some, you know, I just love to say, Sometimes, you know, in fact, what y'all need to start doing on a Sunday morning, we have our meet and greet. First person you ought to meet and greet before you get someone else here, you ought to be saying, Lord, thank you for being present here today. What do you mean by being present, Bishop? You just say the Spirit of God is in us, but if you don't acknowledge that and you don't give him his domain, then he can't work through you. You have to give over to him. Some of you, have you all ever feel like sometimes just sitting there, you're sitting there, you feel that move of God and you just want to scream or you might just want to get up and, and run or just, you might just want to shout out, thank you, Lord. Have you, any of y'all ever feel like that? You know, and you know, it's nothing wrong with it. We acknowledge his presence. Just give over to it. See, only ones become distracted by that. It's a different when someone is doing something to be distracted than when something is going on, seriously, by the Spirit of God, you know. And that's what it's all about. That's why I used to always say when, when the music stopped, people stopped dancing, you know. And I'm wondering, what, what, was it because of the music? You know, because if it's down in you, the Spirit of God is in you. See, that's what it's all about, is reverencing God, because he's present. Sometimes you have to say, Lord, thank you. I never would have made it this far without you. You know, God, thank, you know what? You should be thanking God. Because let me tell you something. People, I hear people saying, oh, I'm going vegan. That's why I'm going to stop eating that meat. I ain't going to eat this meat no more. I'm going vegan. I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. We ain't supposed to be eating meat anyway. You know, read your Bible, people. You know, vegan. What I said, vegan, vegan. What? I said Vegas. Oh, yeah. I said something with a V. <laughs> okay. So now watch this. Here's what, and I was sharing with my wife. I say, well, they must just gonna stop. E even in the milk, I hope I don't turn y'all's stomach. 
You know, my son said, and it was on the news, that even the milk that you drink, they were saying that the, the FDA allows so much of pus from the cow to be in the milk, you know. You know, so, I, you know, I'm saying this here. I, I'm listening to what people are saying, but I told my wife, I say, no, they keep saying God only meant for us to eat fruit and vegetables. I say, no, because in the Bible, they ate meat. Now, if you just want to get technical, then uh, quit eating beef and pork and eat horse meat. The Bible says with the round hoof. I mean, so you, it's so much you could debate about stuff. Ain't no y'all looking at me like that. Y'all done ate horse meat. Y'all just didn't know it. Some of them burger places like McDonald's, Burger King, some of them, they was using horse meat. You know, all of us got some heart centers. That's why every now and then, you know, let me not act like that. I forgot I'm like, you know, but listen. But so I often say, well, what are we going to do then? You're going to stop drinking water? You're going to stop eating vegetables because they use chemicals on vegetables? Our water system is full. The reason why the antibiotics don't work in your bodies that the doctor give you, because all through your water system, uh, that's why they tell people, quit flushing your medication in the toilets or putting them in the sinks. They have a way you can dispose them. Why? They just discovered not long ago that they, 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 can't, they can't separate it. This is why we need to be working out our salvation with fear and trembling, with God present, because they have nothing that they can treat the water with to pull those chemicals out. So everybody who don't have high blood pressure, you've been taking high blood pressure medicine drinking it in your water. Every medication for everything out there, you name it, they were just flushing it in the toilets. Now, that's why I'm telling you to work out your, your, your own salvation with fear and trembling. That's why the Bible says, anything that you take, eat, you always first give God thanks for it and ask him to bless it. See? He even told Peter, don't call nothing that I created unclean because everything God created was good. But it is the evil mindset and, and the, 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 the greed of mankind that decided to say, forget this, we're going to get rich off these chickens, give them this antibiotics, and let's, in, in two days we can sell them in the market. Or once they get in the market, we'll shoot them up with some antibiotics. You know, and the FDA let them do so much of it. That's why when you look on your packs, they're telling you about it. And what do we do? This chicken is $4. I ain't going to pay $4 for a chicken. Give me that $1.79 chicken. And the $4 one said organic, natural, no added stuff to it. Over here it says preservatives, antibodies. It's going in there. So we're seeing cancer on the rise, diabetes on the rise, you know, because all of this stuff is in there, even in your vegetables. You know, you bite down on your apple. I've been through that. All your fruits, they use animal fat to polish them with. That's why it looks so shiny. An uh, apple is not shiny. If you take your fingernails and scratch it, you'll get a little wax substance. It's called animal fat. Now, I, Tiffany, I don't mean, listen, please forgive me, but I got to go here. Even the lipstick that y'all put on is made from animal fat. So you see why we need to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. You know, so everything that, that we do, everything from the chemicals, from the perms, and everything else. This is why we have to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling, acknowledging God every day because we don't know what we're dealing with. You know, people going by and by the water, you know, thinking that's it. Listen, all you do is put a filter on your house, you'll get the same water. You know, I'm gonna hit y'all with this, this last one in a minute. Now, if you want some good water, just go right outside to that hydrant. It's connected to a well, to natural water. 
Wash your hands here with some soap and they're gonna feel slimy, slippery. And then go home and wash your hands with soap. It's gonna feel dry and hard. You see all that white stuff on your showers? Hard water, you know, because it's now. Here's my point I wanna hit you with. How many of you all would drink a glass of water out of a swimming pool if you had to drink a glass of water out of the swimming pool, or let's just say from the church right here, which one would you drink? Church. church. Can I serve notice? The reason why you need to be working out your salvation, when you're drinking water out of your house, you're really drinking pool water. Y'all don't believe that, huh? I'm going to prove it to you. Watch this. Watch this here. Get you a glass of water and go get you a chlorine test kit. Test your water and get you a bottle of water from this well water and test it. You're going to find no chlorine in this water. You're going to find chlorine in your house water. You know, and, 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 and not only do they put chlorine, I used to work for the city, okay? Not only do they put so uh, pretty much the same water in your toiletry is the same water that's going through right back through your houses. It's just been filtered out. Go over to the plant, they treat it, and then they put it back through the water system. It's called water purification. Y'all didn't know all that, huh? This is why I'm saying you need to work out your salvation because all of the stuff that's going on with the greed and the evilness in this world, you have to acknowledge God. God, I'm about to drink this water, but I thank you for it and ask your blessing. Because Jesus say you can, you, 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 you want nothing that you would eat or drink will cause any harm to you, but you got to be thankful for it. I'm just telling you the process of it, what they do. And not only is it chlorine in the water, but it's fluoride also. All of this is in your water. And y'all see what happened over in Flint, Michigan. Those people's water was messed up and they knew about it. The government, the evilness of men knew about it and wouldn't say nothing to all of those people. If stuff goes on, they don't say nothing. This is why they charge people so much if you have a sewer overflowing into the ditches or bios, because all of that water goes into our streams and rivers and stuff. And they and see, and, and what they do is, see, well, y'all don't even know this. I'm gonna educate y'all. When Lake Houston dried up and we had to go out there and survey and where it was water, we walking down there, boats sitting on dry land when it should have been on water. When it got such a drought, what people don't know is, city got a pipeline from here to Conroe, to Lake Conroe. That's how they start piping water back in to Lake Houston to build it back up. So this is why they said don't trash your rivers and your streams because look people, this is your water. They pull that water out of there and pull it back through the water purification plant. You know, so I'm just telling you, work out your salvation. It's time to really start putting your mindset on Christ, on God our Father. It's time to reverence him, fear him. Remember, reverence with the highest respect, fear with honoring him and obeying him because you don't know what's going on in, 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 in your life inside of you. See all the people losing their life over in Mexico, going over there touring, taking them some drinks or shots of whiskey that was contaminated, falling out, some of them dying. You don't know what's going on in life. You don't know. So that's why we have to work out our salvation. Don't quit taking the small things for granted. Start working out your salvation, you know, because that's what it's all about, working out your salvation. You know, much thankful. Let's give God a hand clap. As you stand to your feet, we never like to conclude any service without first giving you an opportunity to answer the call uh, for fellowship, friendship, um, salvation, Uniting with the body of Christ, 
through Christian experience, letter or candidate for baptism, we make this call and appeal to you. You want to accept Christ as your savior. Or if you're already saved, but you need a place to call your place of worship. As we respectfully, in the presence of God, Father, in the name of Jesus, we now thank you as we come to the conclusion of this gathering of the saints here at Heart of Faith. We pray your blessings. In Jesus' name, we thank you. And to our many listeners and followers and viewers, may your blessings be upon them as well. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. God bless you. Uh, we also want to remind everyone uh, that is watching us, you also can participate. If everyone would hold your places for a moment, if you could also participate in the giving also, just follow the instructions on your screen. If you need prayer, email us on our website. God bless you. We say good night. Let's give our viewers a hand clap. We go, okay, this Sunday, Brother Darian is going to be preaching in Texas City. For those of you who want to go, it is a youth function. They will be giving out school supplies, and they are dressing down. They're going to wear their Faith Fellowship uh, shirts. Uh, so we're going to go down there, and then 